Hello, I'm Patty Simpson of Simpson Math. In statistics, we ask some question, then we go out and gather data to help us to answer that question. We would love to be able to gather data from our entire group of interest or our population, but that's just not practical. We usually don't have enough time, money, or human resources to do that. So instead, what we do is we collect data from a sample or a part of our population. Here, we're looking at different methods for how to devise our sample. In this case, we're gonna look at a cluster sample. A cluster sample, a researcher divides the population into different groups or clusters. And a few of those groups or clusters are chosen. Then data is collected from every member of those few groups. So I always think of like a peanut cluster, you know, they have the, or a pecan cluster where it's a chocolate with a bunch of different little pieces of pecan. They're clusters, so they're little groups of pecans or peanuts in the chocolate. And I'm always trying to watch my weight, and so I only eat part of it. I maybe eat half of the, um, of the peanut cluster. But of those peanut clusters, I eat a few groups, but I eat the entire peanut from those few groups. So it helps me remember what, what a cluster um, sample is. Here, their advantage to the, the cluster sample because it's fairly economical and it's fairly practical. In other words, it takes a little bit less time and a little less resources to go into certain clusters. But the disadvantages is that there's a high possibility of sampling error because we may leave out significant portions of the population so that our sample is not representative or is not like our entire population. So it causes some sampling error. And the reason for this is because like tends to like. Think about in your town. Think about in the town that you live in. I bet you can say on the north side of town, such and such happens. Like for instance, in the town I'm in, I live on the north side. Well, on the north side, when we think of the north side, it's old people. This, is, this um, uh, neighborhood is well established. And so a lot of people have, have uh, had houses here for a long time. And so there are a lot of uh, old people that live in this portion of the neighborhood. Whereas if we go out to the west side of town, there are new houses being built out there. And there are families that are newer families, younger families in that portion of town. Think about your town, I bet it's the same way. I bet you can say in this side of town, it's this type of person. In this side of town, it's this type of person. So it tends, it tends to, in populations where like tend to like. In other words, the, if they have the same characteristics, they seem to be drawn to one another. Turns out that's even going to be true in nature, where trees may grow uh, in a certain area. You know, their soil may be richer, so they're taller. Whereas in another area, all the trees may be shorter. Or a certain type of fish may hang out in one part of the pond, where another type of fish hangs out in the other type of the pond. So that's the problem with our cluster um, samples is that when we start to look and divide them into groups, if we only choose a few of those groups, we may be choosing all one type of fish or one, all one type of person or all one type of tree. So it tends to um, lead to some sampling error. So let me give you some examples of cluster samples. A researcher is interested in data about city taxes in Florida. The researcher randomly chooses a few cities from the state. You can see how that would be more economical and practical to just go to a few cities instead of going to every single city in the state of Florida. That would be more difficult. So they've divided it into clusters, their cities, and they're just going to choose a few cities randomly using a number generator or maybe a, a dice or something to help choose those cities. Then once the cities are chosen, the researchers collect tax information from every house in those cities. So 
because we have a few groups, but every house is chosen from them, that is a cluster sample. But again, you can see the bias that might occur or the sampling error that might occur because maybe the cities that are chosen all have the same characteristics. Their taxes are all the same. And some parts of the population might be left out. A researcher wants to evaluate the earnings of airport staff in the United States. The researcher randomly selects 30 airports from the appro approximate 5,200 airports and records the earnings of all the employees at each of those 30 airports. So again, the researcher has divided this into groups, airports, and then chosen a few airports. They're not going to all of them, just a few airports. But at those airports, they're going to look at every single employee at those few airports and collect data from those. And that's what makes it a cluster sample. When we choose a few groups and look at every member within that group, then it's a cluster sample. So there are several different sampling, uh, sa uh, several different methods for choosing samples. And this was the cluster sample. Math made simple at Simpson Math. Thanks for watching.